Right, so hello viewers and welcome to episode 2 of our Let's Play slash tutorial for War in the West. I'm your host, Pupuju Chu, once again, and we're back. And like I said, we're taking a look at uh, the, the air planning phase for the game. So, um, just to recap, the game is uh, divided up into two portions, where uh, each turn, representing seven days inside the war, is divided up into two uh, portions, that is the air planning phase, where the air war phase and the, the land war phase. So, um, how this works is that uh, what, what you do inside the air will affect the ground, and likewise, of course, the ground will affect the air uh, upon starting the next turn. And the air, air campaign is broken up into the tactical portion about supporting your group your uh, your ground units and doing damage to enemy ground units and the strategic war which is of course bombing production and trying to slow down um, how much your enemy can produce or how much supplies they can ferry down to their troops so um, how we're going to start off this campaign is that I want to I want to automate or rather I, I don't want to automate the uh, the air campaign I want to do that by ourselves and uh, nevertheless though the game gives us a tool here for just uh, for, for for very straight forwardly picking out uh, uh, an, an air plan and getting the AI to enact it for us. Um, what I'm typically going to use this panel to do is that I'm typically going to use it to cancel all of our air missions just like that, which uh, allows me to pick out air missions uh, for us instead. So um, how the air mission system works is that we have a wide variety of different missions we can plot, and typically what we, what, we, what we want to focus on during this campaign is simply doing damage or you know supporting our ground troops in one form or another. Um, we're actually not going to do any of the strategic stuff, uh, perhaps until later, uh, or perhaps even not at all, because uh, in my opinion, I mean, inside this campaign, it's actually not all too helpful if, uh, if you say, for example, bomb enemy ports because I uh, well you know like six weeks later we're going to be using those ports um, so that's that anyhow uh, our troops are on sh on shore on Italy and uh, we want our airplanes to cover them so how does this system work well we can plot a few different missions and they're they're uh, they're up here actually so um, we can we can just take a look at our uh, our air our, our airplane missions with uh, with the f1 command here um, the missions are divided into a few different ones we can uh, get our guys to support our ground forces. We can get our planes to attack enemy ground forces. We can get them to bomb cities. We can get them to conduct reconnaissance. Uh, we can get them to provide air superiority in the sense that we can try to um, clear zones out of uh, enemy aircraft. Um, we can get them to patrol uh, the, the seas in the sense clear enemy aircraft from the seas and clear enemy boats, hopefully. And we can also transfer airplanes to and from other places. And that is, uh, well, pretty much all of the game's actions for the aircraft, but be assured um, these play a, a vital role in the uh, the air war here. So, um, how do these how do these play out uh, in practice? Well, uh, we have two overarching panels here that describe what our air force will try to do, and uh, it's this is a, it, it's largely handled by the AI to to an extent. So, uh, for example, we have air doctrines, and these define how uh, how our air missions will try to be uh, conducted, um, in the sense that, uh, for example, we can pick out uh, just generally how 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 high our, our planes fly when they fly and um, in what settings pretty much they fly in general and of course we can change these later on um, and we can make these specific to one mission or a group of missions if we choose to but these uh, these definitely help us out in conducting missions in batch orders which uh, typically we will do so um, we'll start off by uh, by conducting a few rudimentary missions just to show you guys uh, how these how these missions can be done on, on, in the simplest phase and uh, later on we'll try to do some more advanced missions um, but the main thing is that I want to I wanted to note that you can schedule your missions in on not only just say for this week but also on very particular days through this week and uh, well why is this important well um, early on we'll be doing a lot of uh, ground attack missions and with that said I'm actually going to get them to not conduct any ground missions inside the first portion of the uh, the week more or less because we're going to be doing reconnaissance to figure out what uh, we want to hit during the week um, so with that said I'll get this set up 
um, I'm going to bump the intensity of these missions to high simply because I mean these uh, these recon pilots lucky them get the uh, get four days off during the week so they'll have to fly uh, well extra sorties hopefully um, during the early portion of the week and we'll just get that set up so um, now that we've gotten the basic structure of our mission set up, we can start to plot the actual mission uh, zones, if you will. And how this works is that uh, we want to plot a few recon missions first and foremost. So um, we're playing the game with Fog of War, as you uh, as you may have noticed. I can see my own troops and what they are, but for the uh, Axis troops, they're currently just these uh, gray cards that uh, that have the little question mark on them, saying that hey, we don't actually know uh, what these guys are. We just know that they are in this vicinity. Um, so what we can do is that we can toggle this, the air recon levels setting, and this will say that uh, the, the Germans, or rather we have we have no intel about what this uh, light blue or you know, navy bluish color is. We have no idea what is here, um, apart from vague uh, approximations here and there. So uh, what air recon does is that it obviously tries to display these units for us, but in addition to that, it will uh, increase uh, the efficiency of our air missions. And with that said, what we're going to do here is that we're going to pick out Tactical Air Recon or the Tactical Air Force because they have a nice, a lovely sort of uh, air recon planes available to us here. And these are their air bases. This is the actual HQ location for Tactical Air Force. And we just want to plot an overarching mission that says, hey, pretty much take a look at Sicily and take a look at the units inside here. So what we can do is that we can specify one location for our place to fly, or we can uh, specify a area, and here's what we do. So um, a recurring theme that inside the game is that a lot of the things that happen inside the game will be done on the side panel over here. Um, so what this what this will do is that I, I've specified an air recon mission um, so far, because we've set uh, how we want to fly this mission inside the uh, inside the, the air doctrine. In, inside the Air Doctrine screen here, um, the mission right now is just pretty much a, a, a paper copy of the mission we've set inside the Doctrine screen. I'm going to change this a bit so that we, uh, we can make it a bit more, uh, say, accurate or just in general different from it. Um, for example, I'm going to specify a area for our planes to cover. And if I specify this as four, um, you'll see that uh, the radius is four tiles away from where we've uh, we've set it to. And I effectively want our guys or our uh, recon planes to take a look at this entire area. So um, now that we have this set up, we can uh, do a few more things. So for example, I want uh, our planes not to take a look at any airfields. I want them to have a, have a minor priority in taking a look at the units, but more so in taking a look at potential sites for interdiction. And what this will do is that it'll try to make missions focusing on those tasks uh, more more accessible or easier or more accurate or in general more um, efficient uh, inside this area. So we've got that set up. Um, we've already set this up so that it conducts it on three days. And currently, it is uh, oddly enough flying at 3,000 uh, or 30,000 feet. We're going to drop this down to uh, 12 or yeah, 12,000 feet, which will make the mission a lot more effective, but it's going to cost us a lot more aircraft which is fine because right now we have a full sort of planes and of course allied uh, allied production is uh, well a force to be reckoned with to say the least so we'll get that set up just like that um, currently the uh, the AI is taking a look at or the AI is automatically determining how many planes fly in groups um, how how many uh, planes are inside each strike and things like that and we'll just send that off um, like that so that'll be one mission set up um, that'll also incidentally display it uh, here, so we can have a have a have an overarching view of our planes. And as you can see, it paints a nice, lovely box over the area that we want a recon done in. Um, now that we've gotten this mission set up, <coughs> excuse me, folks, we'll plot a ground attack mission again coming from Tactical Air Force. And now we want this one to strike at the units over here. Um, why I'm gonna plot this, I'll tell you, or rather why I'm going to plot this in such an order, I'll tell you guys later on. Um, for now, we're just going to plot this one as, uh, as such here. Um, as you can see, uh, our planes will be gathering inside this uh, island airfield and they, they'll, they'll fly um, in accord to these two lines to the, to the mission area and back. We're going to change this up so that it flies over our friendly units 
instead of flying all the way over enemy territory, just because that'll that'll help conserve a few of our planes. And we want to make a we want to make this a what? Not a five radius attack mission, but perhaps a two radius attack mission. And I I just want our planes to um, peck at units over here. So a, an odd thing about this game is that we're actually going to be doing a lot of interdiction as opposed to directly attacking these units. And what this uh, what this does is that interdiction is. Um, it's effectively delaying enemies, if you will, if you if, if you want to think about it as such, where your planes will try to attack units when they're moving, when uh, whenever they're in columns and all that, and uh, in general, just kind of be a pest at the enemy. Um, what this will do is that it'll make it harder for the enemies to get supplies, and it'll also make it... Uh, it more difficult for units to fight in combat effectively to uh, to support each other. So we'll plot this mission, and again, as we see inside these settings, the schedule is that they'll, con they'll try to conduct their missions um, after the reconnaissance has gone through. So there we go, we've assigned that mission, and again, the AI automatically allots the air groups and all that for us, so that is uh, going to be set up just like that. Right, uh, we're going to issue a uh, another order now. Um, I think we'll only issue those two orders to Tactical Air Force. We'll issue an order to Malta Air Force, uh, however, where we want them to do a ground support mission. And all we all we really want to say that is that, hey, if any of our troops fight the enemy, support them with aircraft. So that's very, very easy to do. And uh, furthermore, we want them to provide aircraft uh, to gain superiority over our, 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 our guys on the ground so that the Axis can't bomb them. So they have a they have a sort of uh, where they have a they have a selection of fighter bombers that they can use. Um, what we can do here is that we can click on an area uh, above our troops, put a box around them just like that, and we're gonna yeah we're going to put two air superiority missions on them just like that. So uh, so far we our orders were our missions. Are, uh, are are using our aircraft on the auto setting so that AI is actually picking out which groups go on these inter these uh, superiority missions and which uh, groups are going on these uh, ground support missions. That is actually not too terribly efficient, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that um, for now and later on. Uh, we'll, we'll be actually managing that by ourselves. So these get these orders plotted in, and um, yeah, this, uh, this pretty much sets things up for now. I'm actually going to make a slight adjustment here. I'm going to go to Tactical Air Force. I want Tactical Air Force to run these ground attack missions for days 3, 4, and 5 and I'm going to leave, leave day seven, 6 and 7 um, away. And this is because I want Strategic Air Force to actually supplement that. So again, we're going to schedule another ground attack mission. We're going to go to Strategic Air Force. I'm actually going to just quickly check that all of these uh, missions have been confirmed with Malta Air Force. And they have, so that's good. And we'll just schedule another one uh, to radius, bomb this area for enemy interdiction and a minor priority on units, bomb them on days 6 and 7. And again, everything else is automatic. So now, this is, uh, yeah, this is the priority. This is the, the primary priorities of our units. And what will happen is that, yeah, the missions will run and hopefully we'll deal, we'll deal some interdiction and some damage to our guys or to, to the enemy guys uh, soon enough. And uh, I'll tell you why I plotted this area in the ground phase, because I think it's a lot more clearer. Um, another thing that we will probably want to do is that we want to uh, rather, uh, in, in, in my opinion, a good thing to do is always to destroy the enemy's air force before we try to conduct any of these ground attack missions. So with that said, we'll be, uh, we'll be using strategic air force to, to hit the enemy's uh, air bases soon enough to try to, knock, uh, to try to knock a few of their planes down. Um, one of the things about the the, the, the the axis is that the axis were, weren't able to actually produce as much as say the well the combined powers of uh, the Soviet Union, um, Great Britain, and America. So with that said, um, if we take a look at the the unit roster here. Um, taking a look at the Western Allies here, taking a look at planes specifically, uh, we have on average we're you know combined right around three three thousand planes split up between the the forces, whereas uh, Germany has um, has right around one thousand, and we're, we're, we're honestly we're just going to ignore the Italian planes entirely because they're <laughs> they're not that good. Um, so with that said, we can take a lot more losses than them, and we can do a lot of when if we uh, if we, we if we keep a one to three ratio, honestly, I think we'll be we'll, we'll be fine.
Um, so here's actually a, a, a handy uh, hotkey command which will show you guys where the enemy has a lot of anti-air guns and where you have a lot of anti-air guns stationed. Um, you, if you hit this once, it'll show you the, the emplacements fixed in cities, and if you hit it again, it'll, well, it won't bring that screen up, it will show you the emplacements uh, were the, the the emplacements with ground troops. Um, so this is rather handy in pl plotting out your air missions because it'll tell you, um, say, where your planes are expected to take a lot of losses and where they won't. And how you read this is that the the leftmost number says the low uh, the low altitude guns and the other number tells you the the high altitude guns so nine is the highest so for example inside uh, this hex right over here um, the enemy has a lot of a ra rather it has a rating of two for for low altitude planes which i believe is anything under eighteen thousand feet and everything above that has a rating of one and uh, obviously i mean like it's not instantaneous if you go at like nineteen thousand you're you're going to receive a, a mixture of small and large flak and and yeah, that's pretty much all that means. Now, the thing that I'm not sure about is whether or not these combine. So, for example, this is a town with a unit and uh, ground forces or, you know, stationed anti-air guns. So I'm not really sure if those combine for a value, uh, though I'd imagine that they do. Now, um, counterintuitively, uh, the reason why I bring this up is because the places with more anti-air guns are typically the places with actual stationed aircraft. So with that said, I want my bombers to, uh, if you will, run the gauntlet. I want them to try to hit some of these major uh, or these defended air bases because if I can pick off a lot of, or rather not even destroy, but more, more or less damage a lot of the enemy aircraft here, um, later on inside the ground uh, phase, I'll be able to capture those air aircraft and effectively destroy a big portion of the Axis air, air uh, forces. So, with that said, we're going to go back to Strategic Air Force, we're going to get their bombers, and this time we're going to set up a few manual uh, missions to hit these uh, air forces. So, um, starting off, we're going to key in this minor air force, or this minor air base, we're going to switch the mission from interdict to airfield only. Um, we want to hit them pretty much just once uh, out of the day, and this is when we get to check out how to manually uh, assign groups to these missions. So. Um, the groups that are assigned to these missions will obviously try to uh, run, <coughs> try to conduct their, uh, their assigned air operations here. And while you get a whole big list of planes here, I mean, it's quite intuitive. Um, level bombers will always have this LB designation for it. Fighter bombers will always have an FB designation. And as you might imagine, tactical bombers have a TB and the such. And it just kind of goes on and on. So it's, uh, it's, very, it's very intuitive. Um, how we want to plot, uh, like as per the individual aircraft, so for example, what's the difference between a, a B-17 Fortress and a Wellington 10? Um, that is more so up to your reading of this and whether or not uh, you play any other aircraft games. Um, for intents and purposes though, we're going to treat the bombers as, 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 as equal things for the most part here. Um, so how this works is that it lists off the group, it lists off how many planes are ready inside that group, uh, what type, what model it is, of course, what range, as in how far they can go, and what their current type is. And you can you can also fly night missions, though, uh, without night vision, it, 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 it's really inaccurate. Um, so what we want to do here is that I'm, I'm actually going to just launch a few very minor strikes of right around, yeah, 70, 80, 80-ish planes, 80-ish bombers, and 50-ish escorts, and we'll send that off just like that. And once again, that's going to be a day one mission. Uh, we don't want uh, all too many of those going on. And likewise, we're going to send another one over here. We're going to try to bomb it. And uh, the thing about anti-aircraft guns is that they have a bit of a zone of a control. They can hit anything flying next to the hex as well, though at a, at a lesser efficiency. So that's why we're going to move our air path over here so that hopefully we don't catch as much flak. And likewise, once again, hit the airfield, uh, instead of automatically selecting a group, we want uh, a mixture of planes to go in here, a single aircraft uh, escort, send that through, and hopefully that'll do some more damage there. Now, for these two locations, for the 9-9 the over here at Trapani and the one over here, we're going to increase the altitude of our bombers, which are going to make them uh, less accurate, but it's gonna save, hopefully, a lot more of our planes. Uh, once again, hit the airfield base, 
and it looks like we'll only be able to hit this one not the other one that is fine with me either way we'll uh well conduct the strike and that is uh, pretty much the end of the air planning phase so um, that's yeah this gives us an air uh, planning mission or an overview of this and how I get the overview is that I put it back on F1 because if you put it on uh, one of these uh, particular mission ones it'll filter out those missions to show you on the on the map anyhow we're gonna conduct a few ground attack missions to uh, hopefully stem off uh, enemy troops over there and we're also going to be conducting a few more I uh, just wanted to check what whether or not this one was on airfields or not, on those individual bases just like that. So now what we now well, what do we do? We hit the air uh, the the end air directives where you know execute air directives button. It'll send it off. The uh, the AI will fire off these missions, and uh, the game gives us quite a lot of uh, different settings here. So the game will actually simulate the air combat between the individual planes. And as you can see at the very little top bit of my screen, it's uh, it's firing off different planes doing different things. Um, but typically that that is way too much detail for what we need. So what I'll do is that I'll switch this on message level one which means hey tell me the important stuff only and uh what will happen is that the yeah the ai will try to run these missions as as the game goes on our bombers are going through the losses mount up we've taken 16 air combat losses 10 air flak losses and 15 operational losses Operational losses are a mixture of just planes getting damaged, you know, wear and tear, failures and all that. Um, so that part is actually just inherent. It, it also factors in training losses. So for example, if, uh, if uh, like you, you, your pilots do train um, when they're not running these missions, and oddly enough, there there seems to be a bit of an imbalanced thing going on inside the game right now, where uh, you, you suffer like 10 training losses per week, which is a lot. Um, if uh, yeah, if you consider how it how it models reality, um, you guys probably were hopefully some of you guys caught the uh, caught the amount of losses we managed to strike at uh, in in terms of enemy losses on the ground there. But nevertheless, I'd imagine that the uh, the losses on the ground are pretty severe for the uh, for the airfield bombing missions. Yeah, so it looks like we hit a few airfields. Did, uh, did like five. Uh, we hit took down six of their bombers there. Took a lot of uh, where six of their fighters took a lot took down um, fourteen of their bombers there, and in general these missions will go on through there. So uh, one thing that I should note is that as you may have noticed back there, we took a lot of air losses, or it says we did. Uh, let me see whether or not I can bring that back up. Um, no, that's doctrines. Yeah, there we go. So we lost 91 planes where it claims to, and we, we damaged like 200 some planes. Um, if we go to the, over lo the overarching losses here, I believe it only states uh, that we, yeah, we, 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 we realistically only lose um, a couple of planes here. And oddly enough, the Axis uh, losses jumps up to 141. Um, why it does this, I, I honestly don't know. I, I believe it's a disconnect between the allied damaged losses not counting. The, 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 the actual losses do indeed count. Um, but one of the bigger things is that I believe some of the, some of the times um, the, the game will calculate that we've damaged enemy planes and then later on recalculate the fact that they won't be repaired so they're, they're technically destroyed. Um, that part I'm not too terribly sure of, but taking a look at the straight up losses, it looks like uh, yeah we did uh, we did a quite a heavy blow in the sense that we took down a hundred of their um, fighters, not too many bombers, um, which is fine. And in the process, it looks like our losses are spread up upon various different planes, which is good. Which means that uh, not one particular squadron was uh, destroyed in itself. And if you remember, uh, the Axis only have right around uh, a thousand good planes, so that actually knocks them down uh, quite a lot, just like that. So anyhow, um, that is the air phase of the game, and next time when I'm back, we will be taking a look at the ground action. So, hope you guys, uh, you know, be sure to like and subscribe for the